Aloha. I'm Tom Hester, Chief of Hawaii's Adult Mental Health Division, Department of Health. It's my pleasure to welcome you to this digital recording of our first annual Best Practices Conference, Innovations in Dual Diagnosis. This conference focused on the evidence-based practice of integrated treatment for co-occurring mental illness and substance use disorders. Consistent with our guiding principle of recovery, the Best Practices Conference serves as a yearly gathering place for our consumers and families, advocates and providers, and managers and mental health professionals. It is our hope that through this shared learning experience, we will close the gap between the treatment that has been determined to work and the treatment our consumers receive, and bring those of us responsible for providing service and the people we serve closer together. Please join us at our next gathering. I look forward to seeing you there. Many artists in Hawaii's music industry were among the hundreds who braved the rain to pay tribute to a man who considered one of Hawaii's most talented contemporary singer and songwriters. I sing the old songs, but the songs tell about Hawaii of yesteryear. Nike was doing the songs of now and what is happening. It's a big difference. Fury's life was one of ups and downs. His music career began in the 70s with the popular group Kalapana. Recently, there were talks of more concert tours and a new album was in the works. But Fury hanged himself two weeks ago in his cell at Halava Prison. It was an abrupt end to Fury's long battle with a drug problem and depression. The Fury family has a lawsuit against the state, saying not enough was done to prevent Fury's suicide. And absent today, Fury's wife, Dana. Fury's family filed a temporary restraining order against her, barring her from attending today's service. A private viewing was arranged for Dana Akana yesterday, but she declined. Regardless of the past, it's the music and memories friends say they will remember Fury for. His sensitivity and how he combined it with the music is, you know, we, we lost a true legend. That's all I, the memories I'm going to have are the good memories, you know, and, and there's a lot of good memories. In Kaneohe, Jill Kuramoto, KITV4 News. Most people remember Mackie Fury for his music. He touched so many lives. But I remember Mac as my baby brother. We called him Baby Mac in those days. We knew he was special even back then. Mac, he had a chance. He was really turning his life around. He didn't need prison, he needed help. It just doesn't make any sense to put sick people behind bars. Treatment works, prisons don't. On Saturday, February 20th, 1999, Hawaii lost one of its most gifted and influential entertainers in Mackie Fury. He was a wonderful singer, songwriter, guitarist with the band Kalapana for 25 years and an outstanding solo artist in his own right. The entertainer is believed to have hanged himself in his prison cell after a history of problems with depression, drugs, treatment programs, and relapses. His story focuses attention on patterns of drug addiction and mental health and treatment needs. Mackie Fury's sister, Danceta Fury, will share her personal reflections on his struggle and tragic death. We're pleased to have Danceta, who has a Bachelor's of Science in Criminal Justice from Chaminade University. She is a professional dancer, singer, Honolulu Police Department Sergeant and Detective, private business owner, realtor, and community advocate for people in need. Please join me in welcoming Dan Fury. Aloha, everybody. Um, as I stand here today, I'm very honored. Not for all the letters that are in here, the PhDs and MDs. Yes, I'm honored for that, too. But the fact that you are here at a time of such great need for our people of Hawaii. 
when Mackie died in 1999, I don't even know if the word dual diagnosis was was even talked about or understood like it was today. And I've listened in. I've listened in on some of the talks upstairs, and I feel very, very hopeful. Today, um, rather than let me talk too much, I'm going to let my brother talk because that's what he wanted to tell. This is the story that Mackie wanted to tell of the hardships that he went through and the trials and tribulations. Mackie's. Uh, Mackie had a lot of things going against him. Like many of us, and I've just learned today that one of every five of us in here suffer from a mental illness, and I count myself as one. Um, Mackie was born the fourth child, and my sister, who's the baby, came a little later on. He was called Baby Mac because he's junior, but not only that, because he was timid as a child. He had to overcome two older siblings who were athletic and smart, and another one, my second brother, who used to like to, as, as, as I quote him, well, maybe I beat up on him too much. Mackie was very timid, and um, at a young age, he was subject to sexual abuse. So starting life off, um, he, he was a little behind. But he met those challenges as best he could. And maybe that's why he threw all of his attention, desires, and passion into music. For as we know, and as I know now, Mackie was gifted from the age of seven when he picked up his first guitar in elementary school. One of his uh, second grade um, students, I mean, companions, said that they entered an um, contest in elementary school. And Mackie, being the entertainer that he was, uh, taught himself how to play the ukulele upside down because stage presence, it was better if they were facing the same way as they were standing on the stage. So he was a left-handed. And that was second grade. By the age of 12, Don Ho had sent uh, someone to Kaimaki Intermediate School to solicit a song from Mackie that he liked and wanted to record one of Mackie's songs. So his friend ran up to him as Mackie left the office and he said, so what, bro? You're going to be famous. You're going to have plenty of money. And so Mackie turned and said, nah, his voice is not good for my songs. <laughs> so just like that, he gave it up. But Mackie went on to teach himself how to play uh, piano, uh, bass guitar, a lot of different instruments. In fact, I did not know how talented my own brother was until he died, because I loved him just because he was my brother. So I'm going to let Mackie talk to you for a little while and let you get inside his head. Can we roll it? Um, let's start a little bit with, with your music career. Um, it. Um, First of all, I was wondering, are you are you writing songs now? Have you been? Yeah, I've been writing songs here in the module. Uh, we we have uh, you know musical instruments in there for uh, um, for you know recreation purposes. And um, the module that I'm in, module one, you know, the guys wanted me to say that. <laughs> they wanted me to say that. Module one, uh, our Sergeant Yulen there, he uh, you know, he's organized like a whole area on Fridays, you know. And it gives a chance for guys to uh, share their talents, you know, music or or um, stories, art, anything, poetry, and stuff like that. Um, you'd be surprised, you know, for a lot of uh, people who were on the outside who who wouldn't, you know, portray themselves as having an artistic temperament or what. <laughs> when they come in here, they uh, they do that, you know, freely, and it's uh, it's a good thing to share. Yeah. Perfect. Mm -hmm. What are, what are the songs you've written? What have they been about? Um, mostly about getting out, you know, um, about the Lord too, uh, I, I'd like to say that today, especially when I, I knew that we was going to do the interview, you know, when you contacted me, I, uh, I wanted to be sure to say that I come here in the name of Jesus, you know, because he's, uh, affected a major change in me and my thinking and the way I view things. And also I believe that 
he can help anybody who uh, who comes and asks for help, you know, from Jesus Christ and, and the Father. So, you know, my I wanted to especially say that 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 the Lord loves everybody, you know, even uh, people outside. I know when it, you're out there, there's a lot of a uh, lot of uh, stimulus, I guess you'd say, and people because of that, they kind of. Uh, you know, don't have time just like for God or think about God or what He what He does in our lives. You know, but uh, when you come into a place like this, you really uh, have to look inward and and you know, uh, I just feel glad that I had the opportunity to talk about God in front of, you know in front of TV because we reach a lot of people and let's say praise the Lord. Was it always inside you? Uh, yes. Yes, and uh, you know one of the main reasons I believe that I had to come in here because I wasn't listening. Uh, you know, he had sent me many messages uh, about where I was heading, but like everybody else, I just didn't have time. I'm too busy running around. So when you come in here, you got a lot of time to just sit down and be quiet. You know, and that's what he wants. And he wants you to, to pay attention to what he wants you to do, which is pretty basic. It's like help help other people who are not as fortunate as yourself. Um, talk to everybody about him, you know, about the Lord Jesus Christ and what he can do and how he's died for all of our sins, you know. But when you're in here, you have the time and the, uh, the ability to sit down and, and he wants everybody to kind of just take time off and the hustle and bustle and being too busy for him. Well, praise God. <laughs> That's great. What, what did bring you here? Now that you well, I would say this was the uh, culmination of a long road. I, I would say that it was drugs. Drugs is the main thing. And um, I've been using drugs since I was a teenager, so that's a long time. It's, uh, you know, like 30 odd years. Mackie was very close to my mother, being the. Um, we were born in a Chinese family. And if you know anything about Chinese, the boy is the favorite. My mother was the girl. My uncle was the boy. My mom got pregnant at 16. By the time Mackie was born, she was only 21. Mom and grandma they had a rather tumultuous relationship. And of course, mom was pregnant very young, which is really looked down upon those days. So mom left the household when Mackie was only about six or seven years old. And I know that's why there's a lot of issue with abandonment in our family. And then shortly thereafter, it was my grandparents' house. My father was asked to leave. So we were basically there with my grandparents and my uncle, his wife, and his five kids. So there were 10 of us. I can't complain because my grandmother took us to Disneyland she saved those gold bond stamps, remember? <laughs> yes, I'm that old. <laughs> but, <laughs> but what we didn't realize is maybe we didn't get a lot of things um, emotionally that we needed. And we tried to cope the best we could, but we were kids. And for Mackie being the youngest, I, I know it was really hard for him because he was very close to my mother and when she left he was devastated. Now mom did come back into the picture later on but by then um, there was the sex abuse and I know now because I know a lot more like you through education that it really was the depression and he coped with it with the drugs. And when you are a person in the limelight, it's very difficult because there's a lot of stigma. And in 19, when Mackie was suffering from the 60s, 70s, up until the 90s, even 99, there was no understanding of dual diagnosis. It was, ah, you got a drug problem, quit, you go to jail. Your choice. There are many, many, many people, um, men and women, who have these issues and are going through these problems, and they're not getting, uh, I think, proper treatment. Friends hope his tragic death will spur lawmakers to fund more drug treatment programs. Oh, Lord, 
Terry Hunter, KGMB9 News. That was a video to show that Mackie actually came out publicly trying to get help for not only those in addiction, but to make people aware that there's also the dual um, disease that he suffered from. And now, Lofaka? I to uh, any of them about um, getting back together again, but I'm hoping to do that when I get back. I mean, Kalpana is, <laughs> I don't know, I've, I've been with them more longer than I've been with my family, you know, 20 something odd years. So we know each other really well. That's why I wasn't able to get away with it. What's your best moment when you look back? Uh, um, let's see. Well, I guess it would be the first time that we played at the, uh, first time we headlined at Waikiki Shell. Yeah, and we played there three nights and you know, we sold out that, you know, it was like 1975. It was right after we had done that first Coughlin album. That was, see. You know, it was something because, you know, we were, uh, we were doing fairly well as a club band before we left. And then when we went up to uh, do the album, we were playing the colleges and stuff. But, you know, we were setting up our own things. You know, we were kind of just a small band. And when we came back, I was kind of um, amazed at the uh, crowd, you know, and how much people were into Kalapana and, you know, all of that. You know, and that, I don't know what you call it, idolatry or something. <laughs> So that was, that was the best, the, the top of it. What do you remember yeah. about it being so good? I mean, well, I remember being, um, well, I remember I was, at that time I was um, eight, 19, 19 years old, and, you know, I was like kind of, oh, wow, you know, okay, we got all this, um, you know, um, fame and, uh, and glory and stuff, you know. I wish now, you know, I wish I, at that time I had, um, you know, give it to the Lord because that's where the glory should have went, you know, but because I didn't, you know, it was a long, hard road um, dealing with that, you know. You know, a lot of people think that they want to be well-known and famous and, and wealthy and what have you, but a lot of those things come with responsibility, and I know that now, you know, and uh, it's not always so good, you know. You Thank you, Lopaka. Actually, Mackie had a lot of things to say, and uh, although you didn't get to see, what he really wanted to say was, it was a message to the kids, and that was, if you're doing drugs, stop. Message to the parents, if you're doing drugs, you're setting a bad example for your kids, stop, or get help. Um, the video was taken when Mackey was arrested in 1966. He served six months, and upon leaving prison, he was full of hope. He was determined not to go back again. Unfortunately, um, Mackey was duly diagnosed, which is twice as hard as just someone suffering from a drug addiction, for example. He went back to an environment that still had drugs. Um, his um, marital relationship. And you and I both know if someone goes back to a home that still has drugs, their chances of uh, being successful is close to nothing. Especially since in Mackie's life, I don't know if you noticed, but he wrote love songs. And that's what he was looking for all his life that had a lot to do with the abandonment. And whenever he loved someone, he loved with all his heart. That's why he wrote the songs. The Hurt, Nightbird, Moon and Stars. It was always about love or love lost. So now Mackie was a Christian. He knew that with the Christian, the Christian way was to take care of your family and keep them together. So he tried to do that, keep his family together, keep himself together. But of course, the drugs was always there. 
plus the job that he did, the people around him. It was difficult for him because he was famous and people flocked to Mackey. Um, he wasn't a very strong-willed person. My older brother was. He was the pet. <laughs> My second brother was the Pololo uh, wildcat. I, I was the studious athletic scholar. And then there was Mackey. He had big shoes to fill. But boy, did he fill them. So Mackey succumbed his depression, the combination of uh, the tumultuous relationship that he had with his wife and the wanting to keep it all together, the marriage himself, and the fact that he was in the media so often. And you know for a fact that the media can be cruel if they if they want to. I mean, a week after we buried Mackey, they played something on television, and I called them on it, and I said, you know what you just delivered was not true. Why did you put it on TV? And the guy confided in me, and he said, well, my station manager wanted to put more dirt out on Mackey. And this is after, a week after we buried him. So, in all of life, we really need to take look at what we see out there in the media and what we read about and you know that so let's so subsequently Mackey um, was had a positive drug test for drugs um, was finally placed on a regular routine of medication in fact Talking about, and what I just learned upstairs, um, recognition. One of his friends, his band members, told me that he was so happy because, you know, he ran to me and he said, look, look, I got these pills. They say I'm sick. He was so ecstatic because finally somebody was able to tell him that it's not, you know, it's not just your fault. You have this condition. And he was so happy. But... It was difficult for him because he loved his wife. He wanted to keep his family together. And to put a long story short, um, I'm going to show you what happened. Can you roll the next tape? This was just a time, even though they say you're not my kind. Can you hear me? This is actually Oh, all my friends are laughing. Seeing you up with other men, I'm dying. Can't you see it in my eyes? I'm crying. This, was t this tape was taken Later. of Mackey only one month before uh, he was put in Halava. So you can see already the effects of the depression. Fury started performing again and said he hoped to turn his life around. But last month he was rearrested for violating a restraining order his wife had against him and he was found to have tested positive for drug use. Just two days ago, Fury was back in court asking a state judge to not send him back to prison. I wish to apologize for taking the court's plan. Um, I believe that justice would be served if I be allowed to go into a residential program to, to deal with the abuse problem that I have. You 
violated your probation so many times that you, you just failed to take advantage of all those opportunities and I just failed to see I failed to see and I haven't heard any other thing convincing this morning so your request is denied Fury looked dejected as deputy sheriffs led him away but prison officials say he exhibited no signs of suicidal tendencies before he was found dead in cell block at Halava Correctional Facility. They said that he was quiet and respectful and they didn't notice any anything uh, unusual about his behavior. You can see that he was depressed. On top of that, when Mackie went to prison, there was a particular guard there that for the 30 days that Mackie was alive, based on sworn depositions, um, harassed Mackie because he had a special relationship with Mackie's wife. When they found Mackie's body, the guards at Talava, um, the inmates found him actually, and they started CPR as soon as they found him. They said his body was very warm, and these, these inmates in particular really thought that they could resuscitate him, but the prison guards came in, ordered them to stop CPR, and no one ever gave him any medical attention. So the lesson here is, please, whatever you do, use prison as a last resort, because when we talk about hope, like upstairs, we talk about treatment in an ideal situation, like in a hospital. The men and the women there just do not get it. There's not the array of treatment. There's not that um, that special something that you you have the, by virtue of the fact that you're all sitting here. But there's hope, and we're going to run the next tape. This is Mackie's yeah. legacy. His voice has touched many people's hearts in the group Kalapana. And he wants all of you guys to remember the legacy he's put into his music. Sebastian himself is planning to start a career on stage. In the future, I hope to uphold the legacy also in music, like my cousin John Fury. Sebastian Fury. Kalapana Juniors. <laughs> The memorial service for Mackie Fury is March 6th at the Hawaiian Memorial Park in Kaneohe. Sebastian is now 20 years old. He's in the National Guard and he's scheduled to serve in Iraq next year. So Mackie's proud. Not only that, his three nephews, John Fury, John um, Eli Lopez, and his brother Kaya Lopez all play music. If any of you are visiting from the mainland and are staying at an Outrigger or an Ohana Hotel, if you listen to the in-service, the television, with the you know tells you about the islands, the background music is played by them. And if you're ever at Sunset on the Beach, Kimo'o Farms, Dave and Buster's, or the Beach House, they might be playing. You might be lucky enough to hear them. So in summary, this really is a story of hope, and I really just wanted you to experience Mackie and experience what he had to go through, not only him, but us. And I'm here, and I'm proud, because all of you took the time to come here and share with me the story of my brother. Thank you.